that National Guard helicopter, someone trapped on top of their pickup truck. Separate levee breaks along the river between Slough House and Twin Cities. This is uh, unbelievable. This is the worst I've ever seen. Officials are stopping and turning around all vehicles approaching the downtown portion of Coloma. Everywhere you turn here, you're going to run into flooding. It's not a pretty sight. Take a look for yourself. A very wide break here in the levee along the Feather River. The images of the flood are almost unimaginable, especially with our recent history of drought. They just pulled a person out of there, but look where they are working over. Whoever was trapped there, I mean, there, there's not even a tree to cling to down there. They're in, in just brush. For most of a month, California had too much water and couldn't get rid of it fast enough. While the flood was caused by rain, the story of the New Year's flood actually started before Christmas with snow. In the days leading up to Christmas 1996, cold storms brought plentiful snow to the Sierra. Skiers and snowboarders enjoy the fresh snow for the holiday. The snowpack was 150 to 200 percent of average for late December. But weather patterns started to change after Christmas. This is the storm we're looking at. A series of warm, wet storms started to line up in the Pacific and take aim at California. The rain started before New Year's and it rained and rained. Especially on the west slope of the Sierra. And it was warm. The snow level, which had been down below 5,000 feet a week earlier, was now up near 9,000 feet. Doppler radar continues to show rain making its way through the area and there's more to come. The fresh snowpack started to melt away. The snow melt, heavy rain started to swell rivers in the Sierra. The first sign of trouble was the South Fork of the American River. We have just obtained some dramatic new pictures. On the morning of January 1st, there was a massive mudslide that covered Highway 50 and blocked the river. The flow was temporarily blocked and Highway 50 was closed for days. The rush of water down the river was on its way to Folsom Lake. In the High Sierra, the Truckee River flooded not only the town of Truckee, but all the way down to Reno, too, including the Reno Airport. All of the residents around here, all of the subdivisions are inundated with water. I mean, it's unbelievable. Water poured down every river on the west slope of the Sierra. From the north to the south, every river was on the rise. The Merced River flooded Yosemite for the first time since 1862, with a high water mark that is still noted today. The Yuba River near Nevada City is a great example of the power of the water that was on its way to the valley. Checking the runoff situation. At KCRA, we started continuous coverage that would last more than three days. We are here in El Dorado County. On January 2nd, the Cosumnes River, which is mostly uncontrolled, saw a record high level. The flow down the Cosumnes was more than twice the previous record and caused the levees to fail, not just in one or two places, but in 18. And look at the water just raging, and that is heading towards homes. It looks like the homes that may be affected are along Slough House Road right now. 15,000 people in southern Sacramento County evacuated. 100 homes in Wilton were flooded. The flood water covered Highway 99 and I-5, closing those roads and making access to Sacramento from the south impossible. The National Guard rescued those that were caught in the rising water, like this, on Twin Cities Road. This person uh, definitely trapped and uh, just waiting to be uh, lifted out of there. Whether they're going to take him all the way up into the aircraft and then fly him to safety or whether they're just going to kind of hover over to the side and put him on dry ground, we'll have to see what uh, which option he goes for with that. Looks like mission accomplished. That's terrific. Whoa, well, Michael, his lucky thanks. day. On the major rivers, releases were increased from the dams. The American River below Folsom Dam ran at a dangerously high level. This is, as I said, the, the most I've ever seen in it. The water ran high in the levees near neighborhoods in Sacramento County. Levee patrols kept a close eye to watch for boils, but the levees held. Farther north, releases from Lake Oroville were also increased on January 2nd. As the Feather River rose, there was concern that the levees downstream might fail. They were evacuating everybody. The entire city of Oroville was evacuated. For many nervous hours, those evacuated waited to hear news. And when they did, the news was good. Everybody's ever watchful, but the signs are encouraging. The good news along the Feather River was temporary. The high flow continued downstream. At the juncture of the Feather and the Yuba, 
Marysville is evacuated, making it look like a ghost town. You can't go that way. It's flooding at the end. You got to go, sir. On the night of January 2nd, just after 8 p.m., we heard the worst news. Here are the dreaded words, levee break. We have a levee break on the Feather River. There was a rush to evacuate in the dark. Most got out before the water rose, but some did not. We just waited too long and got out, we got stuck. Did the water came in quicker than you anticipated? Yes, very fast, very fast. The sun is up, and this is going to be our first look at the break. Just on the morning on, of January 3rd, on, daybreak on. revealed the damage from the levee failure. There were thousands of homes underwater. The water is just rushing. There. Water and, flowed uh, through the break the for as far as the eye could see, through uh, farms and homes. Home. It's, uh, that's someone's home. I mean, that's their safe, uh, their safe place, and uh, that, that's not supposed to happen. It's uh, a very disturbing sight. The flooding was so extensive and the need so great, the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard was brought in to rescue those that couldn't get out. Those that did evacuate waited for word of what happened to their homes. Many would have to wait for days to get back to see what the flood had left behind. Farther south, the Tuolumne River was running high too. Yeah, Lake right. Don Pedro was over capacity and water poured through the spillways. But the release was at 50,000 cubic feet per second. Downstream in Lake Modesto, the Tuolumne River reached a level Modesto never seen, seen before. Wilson, that high water Indian also County. backed up this Dry Creek and sent flooding into homes. many neighborhoods. This is an area of densely packed homes, a subdivision. Hundreds of homes were engulfed in water five to 10 feet deep. High water continued to cause levee breaks even days after the rain stopped and the sun came out, especially along the San Joaquin River. Levees crumpled near Stockton and Manteca. It's going right here, and the big one is right there. They can stop this, but they've got to have to hurry. There were 24,000 homes that had been destroyed or damaged. Sadly, only 6% had flood insurance. From levee repairs to rebuilding homes, the cleanup would take months. The effort to prevent the next flood would go on for years. The way we look at floods was changed forever.